A load balancer is a device or software that helps route incoming traffic to upstream backend servers. These load balancers operate at the application layer or transport layer of the OSI model and can distribute traffic based on various algorithms, such as round robin, least connection, random, etc. Many AWS services incorporate the load balancer component into their stack, making an understanding of load balancer functionality critical. Load balancers ensure high availability, scalability, and overall performance of an application. They prevent individual servers from becoming bottlenecks. If one server crashes, traffic is automatically redirected to healthy servers. Today, we will write a Go server, set up a simple HTTP load balancer using Nginx, and observe various load balancing algorithms in action. Let's write a Go server using the Gorilla Mux HTTP router. First, we will import the HTTP and Gorilla Mux packages. Second, we will implement a route handler to serve incoming requests. Please note that there is a log statement inside the handler. Finally, we will create a MUX router inside the main function and attach the handler. In this case, we will start the server on port 8086. Let's dockerize this application, ensuring that we expose port 8086. Let's create a Docker Compose file to run both the Go server and Nginx as a load balancer. First, we'll add the Go service, which we recently wrote, with three replicas to enable running three instances of the Go server. We'll reference the backend network created at the bottom. Next, we'll include the Nginx service, mapping port 8080 to the HTTP port. We'll also mount the Nginx configuration file as a volume. Finally, we'll add a dependency on the app service so that Nginx starts after the app service. As we know, Docker Compose automatically maps service names to the respective container IP addresses. In short, the service name becomes the host name for running containers. Let's configure the Nginx server as a load balancer. We will create an upstream that points to the Go server running on the same network. Instead of specifying IP addresses for all three containers, we will use the service name as a host name. Notably, the method is not explicitly mentioned as it defaults to round robin. Finally, we will define a server to forward incoming traffic to our upstream. To test this setup finally, we need five terminals. Performing this task manually isn't any fun. Let's write a script that utilizes tmux to create five terminals with a fancy layout. The first terminal is for the client, the second for the load balancer, and three terminals for our three backend servers. This script not only creates the terminals, but also executes the correct commands in each one. We have a dedicated video on how tmux works. Please check it out on the end screen. Now let's run this script and observe our setup. On the left side, we have the client. In the middle, there's the load balancer. And on the right, we have three Go servers. Let's send the first request using curl. Observe that the request is routed to the first server through the load balancer. Now let's send a few more requests, and you'll notice that they are being served in a round-robin fashion. Let's stop the servers and close these windows. Now, we will change the algorithm to random. After this change, we will execute our script and invoke the API. Here, we can observe that upon invoking the API, the request is served by a random server from our replicas. Let's hit it a few more times to see the results. We can notice that the server is randomly selected and the request is being served. Let's stop the servers once again and close the windows. Now, we will modify the algorithm to IP hash. In this scenario, the backend server is determined based on the hash value of the client's IP address. This implies that for each client, only one backend server will respond. Let's verify this change by restarting our servers. Here, we will invoke the API. We can observe that the request was handled by this server. Now, if we execute it multiple times, only this server should respond. There are two other important methods of load balancing. First, least connection. The request is forwarded to the server with the minimum number of connections. Second, least time. The request is forwarded to the server with the lowest average latency and the lowest number of active connections. Since our servers are running on local host and are very lightweight, it is hard to demonstrate these two methods. 
However, typically, it is a matter of just changing the method name inside the Nginx configuration file. I have included all the source code, including the Tmux script, below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.